Hello, Paul Gabriel here for another installment of Ask ZBrush. So we had the question uh, sent in, how can we make a tune shade look within ZBrush? So there are various ways uh, to do that within ZBrush, but I want to focus on the one which is using our materials. So right now I have my Gundam here in the scene. He's made of several subtools, as you can see here to the right. I currently have only the basic material assigned to every subtool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these double arrows right here so I can open the left tray, which by default ZBrush has docked the material palette. So I'm going to open up our modifiers menu here. We'll just scroll up a little bit. And what I want to focus on is the diffuse and the specular channels here. So I'm going to click on the little graph here for diffuse. And you see that there's a strength slider right here. So I'm just going to tap on this. Now that I have that little red box, I can actually type in a number. So I'm going to just put one for my strength and hit enter. And you can see instantly we start getting a tune look over here with on our Gundam. So the key slider that helps us control that tune even more is the slider right to the left of strength which is the step slider. So let's try putting this at three, and you can see we get a little better of a tune shade look to our model. So this in essence is making three various steps within the tune shade. So the higher you go, the more steps you're gonna get. So as you can see here, there's getting more stepping through here. So I'm, I'm good with three, and you can see here there's three steps now within our graph. So let's close that one up. And let's also do that to the spec channel. So we're going to turn our strength on to make sure we have that tune shade on. And for the spec, I'm just going to put it at two steps just to give that extra couple stepping within the specularity. So now you can see we already have something that looks like a tune shade. So the last thing I'm going to do is open up the mixer submenu which is right below modifiers and at the bottom here there's a slider that says outline so I'm gonna turn this up all the way to one and you can see there'll be an outline that starts to come in certain areas of the model you can see right in here there's a nice little dark outline so again here I'll, I'll turn it off and you can see that there's no outline here now we'll turn it back on and then you can see the outline now what's next to that is our depth and you can see what that is it's in essence the strength of the outlines it's it's width let's say um, so the lower you go the more of that outline starts going in your model the higher you go the less the outline you get so you can play with this obviously to find the right setting that works for your model but there is two other ways to do a outline look to our model and let me show you those so I'm just gonna keep this we'll keep this at outline one with a depth of four we're gonna render our model now in by clicking on the BPR which you can see the shortcut for this is shift R so we'll render this out and let ZBrush finish this render so you can see there's our finished render that we have. So we got a nice clean tune shade look starting to happen. We got some outlines and area going. But what I want to do is in our render tab here, our palette, I'm going to dock this over here to the right by clicking on the little icon which is found up here in the bottom, top right, sorry, uh, the circle and arrow. And I'm going to go down to our BPR filters. And I'm going to activate this first one by clicking on this little circle here and then it becomes an open circle. So you can see the filter that's being applied automatically is our noise filter, right? So I'm going to change this to colorize and this is where it's a lot of fun playing with the line art for this character because I'm going to be able to change the colors. So I'm going to make colorize 100% here and let's just make the color kind of different here. Let's make it red. And you can see what's happening is the red's going over the entire image. So I can use this masking slider. If I go all the way to the right, which puts it at a uh, power of one, you can see the only thing that gets the red is our Gundam. If I go opposite, the only thing that's going to get the red is our document. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it on him. And I'm going to go further on down here, and I'm going to use my cavity setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this all the way up. And you can see now what happens is we are now getting red lines 
kind of look like line art. So right now we have these three other settings that I want to change because our radius is set to five. So I'm going to make that lower, maybe set that to two or maybe even one. And you can see the little bit of red that you get. Then you have an exponent here, which again is the roll off of the line. So the lower you go, the less of a roll off the line has as far as uh, it'll help with the thickness of the line. So I find around one usually works pretty well or maybe a little bit lower than one. And then you have a sensitivity slider, which the higher you go, the more sensitive this cavity detection will be. And you can see now there's more parts getting that red. So you can play with this too and find what se sensitivity is working for you. So this is one way you could do it. Or you could also use the edge detect which is found right below the cavity. So you can see I've turned this all the way to one and now you can see where all the red lines are popping up and this too also has a radius which is right here right below so the higher you put that the larger our radius is so we'll just put it at two for now and then next to that you also have a sensitivity slider again so the more you turn this up the more sensitive it is to find the model's edges so we'll put it at like say 1.5 that looks pretty good maybe even a little bit less, 1.2. And then above that, you again have an exponent, which is again controlling how the roll off of the detection happens. So the lower you go, the, in essence, the wider spread it is, and that's why you'll see a lot more red. So what I really wanna do is show you how you can see that by turning off all of our material settings and color settings of this Gundam. So I'm just gonna go down here to our tool palette Right now, this is our selected subtool. I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the brush. That'll turn off all poly paint and any assigned material to all the subtools at once. I'm going to change our material to actually flat color. So now what we have is no material, no color, no nothing. So we're going to render again by hitting shift R or the BPR setting. Okay, and you'll see that even though we still have an edge detection on, there's no red lines really popping up except along the very edge. Okay, So this particular settings here needs some kind of shading value. So what I mean by that is they have to have another material selected in order for them this edge detection to work. It won't work with a flat color. But what can work with flat color is the cavity. So you can see I can just turn on my cavity and here we'll make the lines what we really want, which is a darker color, right? And again, we have all of our settings here. I can make my radius maybe a little bit bigger, get a little more out of that. Maybe the sensitivity drop that a bit more so it's not as, as sensitive, right? And you can see all the variations here just by playing with these sliders. So the beauty part about this is we can even change our document color, which is our back color right here, by click and dragging. And now we've got a white background. So if we were to render again, the only thing we're going to have is the line art of our particular Gundam. And right now the color of the Gundam is still sitting on a little bit of gray. So we'll make that be white. And there you have it. And that's how you can start doing a tune shade look and also get your line art for a tune or even a comic book look. Thank you for watching and please continue to send in your questions to our Twitter account with the hashtag AskZBrush.